This thing literally has no fan. How does it even work? <laughs> I think that's probably the general thought process that most of us had when we were watching the unveiling of the new MacBook Airs. And spoiler alert, it does work and it does work very well. In this video, I'm going to delve into the new M1 MacBooks, specifically the MacBook Air, but this is gonna be similar for the MacBook Pro as well and see how they perform. So just to preface this video, if you've noticed a trend on my channel, it's that I don't like to get too deep into the details. I much prefer a realistic, normal, everyday use approach to my videos and I hope you appreciate it too. So that means I won't be testing the actual temperature reading down to the exact degree or running any kind of throttling tests to see exactly when the M1 chip will thermal throttle. But what this will allow me to do is simply show you how the Mac will perform if you were using it yourself. I've broken down this video into three distinct sections and that is gaming, web browsing and general productivity and editing slash rendering 4K footage. Starting off with gaming, I've had a few hours of gaming time on the Mac and it's performed very well. I've specifically been mostly playing Fortnite and Dying Light and they're not the most resource intensive of games, but again, this is just a base model MacBook Air. I'll show you a few clips now of me testing the thermals of this Mac while gaming. Now the final test is gonna be how hot is this MacBook. So we've been going for about 20 minutes now and it definitely is hot. It's not too hot, it's kind of in between hot and warm. Like I can still leave my fingers on it and I don't get too hot or too uncomfortable. Compare that to the older style of MacBooks, they would be boiling hot right now. And not to mention the fan noise would be just deafening. And again, this one has no fan, so it's dead silent. And at this point, this MacBook has been gaming for about 45 minutes straight across the various games I've been testing. And it is, it's definitely warm, but it is not hot at all. I can rest my fingers on that and it's not really that uncomfortable at all. It definitely is warm, but it's not hot. Now, it's also important to note that while gaming, my left hand never became too uncomfortable while resting on the chassis of the Mac, which is not the case with a MacBook Pro under full load or even some Windows laptops, especially the gaming ones. Although the MacBook chassis is a metal and the Mac does still get a bit warm, so your results may vary. Moving on to general web browsing or productivity tasks, I had almost zero issues with this. The Mac doesn't really seem to heat up at all when under loads of a more productivity or just general nature. And this is contrasted with my base model 2017 MacBook Pro, which would turn into an absolute furnace at the slightest load. It's actually one of the main reasons why I upgraded to this new Mac. And the beauty of it is that you can literally have this thing buried under the bed sheets and it doesn't even matter because there's no fan or airflow involved in keeping the M1 chip cool, at least on the MacBook Air. Chrome also doesn't seem to have much of an effect and I've had up to 10 tabs open playing YouTube videos and the laptop might get slightly warm to the touch, but it doesn't get hot. Side note, the new ARM compatible version of Chrome is set to be released any second now. One important thing to note at this stage is that even when the MacBook is under full load and the M1 chip is being pushed hard, the actual level of heat never really becomes too uncomfortable. Apple has really got the thermal throttling down to a science now, and my 2017 MacBook Pro would get so hot sometimes that if I left my finger on the chassis near the CPU for more than a few seconds, I'd have to pull it away because it just got too painful. Finally, I'll chat about editing and rendering. Now, editing is great, as I've discussed in numerous past videos. I'll link a few in the top right-hand corner right now. And in terms of thermals, the Mac gets quite warm, but nothing too crazy. If I'm rendering full frame 4K footage from my Sony A7 Mark III at 25 FPS, 100 megabits per second in .mp4 codec, it's also not a super huge deal. Rather than go into too much boring detail, I'll let the following clip speak for itself. Now in this clip, I used Resolve 16. No, the 17.1 beta is still not working for me to render my MacBook Air review video. Have a look and see what you think. 
All right, so this is going to be the rendering and the heat test. Now I've exported one of my projects over from my main PC rig over to this new MacBook Air. And it's all sitting on a Samsung T5 SSD, which is, this is actually a great little SSD, by the way, I do highly recommend. Sometime I'll do a review on it, but that's for a little bit later. Now, like I've mentioned in my previous videos, all of this footage is shot on this camera here, which is a Sony A7 Mark III. It's full frame, 4K, 100 megabits per second in .mp4 format. And as you can see here, before I even render, it plays perfectly. There's no issues. Now, there's no tricks to this. It is full 4K, lightly color rendered as well. And if we go into the timeline, it is all set to 4K and it plays straight away. And if we scrub, that works very well. If you want to be able to scrub without any delay or issues at all, go down to 1080. But I mean, this is extremely, extremely good for a base MacBook Air. And as you can see, again, all the clips are color corrected, but only very slightly. So let's put this bad boy and do a render. We'll get rid of all these other programs that I'm not using. And let's just do review. By the way, this review is actually on my channel. I'll link it up in the top right hand corner if you want to watch it. And we're going to format QuickTime codec H264, just the standard stuff. I'm going to add to render queue and we're going to start render. So what I'll do is I'll leave this to do its thing for a few minutes and I'll come back and we'll see how hot it is. Okay, so the render has about 10 seconds left. It's been going for some time now. And you may have seen in the footage that I've sped up, I've actually been multitasking in the background as well, which is incredible. I've been uploading another video to YouTube. So what we'll do now is we'll test the heat. It definitely is warm, but it really isn't that hot. That's, that's pretty crazy. I would say it's actually as hot as it gets when I'm playing Fortnite or or just gaming realistically. Like it's not uncomfortable at all. Like I could rest my fingers there and that would totally be fine. Okay, it's a little bit hot there, but again, I can still rest my fingers there and it's not super uncomfortable. Okay, so that's very impressive. And even more impressive was the render time. Again, full 4K footage and this is Resolve 16. It's not the 17.1 beta that I'm waiting to install because it's just not working for me. Anyway, back to the video. Adobe Premiere Pro is pretty much the exact same experience as what you've just seen. The Mac either just doesn't get super hot or it throttles accurately. Some might argue that this is a bad thing and that it's leaving performance on the table, but I would much rather a cooler running Mac than a furnace that completes a render 15% faster and also burns your fingertips. So that's it for me for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, any questions or comments or things you'd like me to test out on the new M1 MacBooks, please comment below and I will do my best. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next one.